Kids' movies have played a big part in our childhood and help us grow to be the people we are today. The best thing about these movies is that they expanded our imagination and gave us characters to love while displaying a storyline that kept us at the edge of our seats. While these movies were entertaining and perfectly reasonable as a kid, it is time to look at them at an age where we are a bit more grown up and can dig deeper into the events that take place. After all these years, I think it is easy to say that a lot of these films were unrealistic. From talking animals, to live toys, to superpowers, there is no shortage of imaginary scenarios. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the movie Up. In this Pixar classic, we follow the actions of Carl Fredrickson and Russell as they find their way to Paradise Falls. While there are many unrealistic scenarios such as a talking dog, balloons carrying a house, and the very unlikely fact that the flying house did not hit one building, I am going to address why Russell and Carl maybe should not have been alive when the house got back to the ground. After Carl refused to move to a nursing home, he let out thousands of balloons that would eventually lift his house into the sky. In the movie, the house was in the air for approximately 10 minutes of screen time. These 10 minutes involved the house lifting into the clouds, an encounter with a thunderstorm, and an uncertain amount of time where Carl is knocked out. The house then miraculously finds its way to Paradise Falls. I found two problems with this timeline. The first is the oxygen factor. As many know, the altitude affects oxygen levels. The less oxygen there is, the harder it is for us to breathe. The fact is that Carl and Russell spent hours or even days above the clouds without any effects. To put this into perspective, there are a few things that need to be addressed. Optimal oxygen levels are said to be between 19.5 and 23.5%. New York City's oxygen levels are actually at 20.9%. Even though those numbers are optimal, people can still live in areas such as Aspen, Colorado, where oxygen levels are at 15.4%. But when does it begin to become deadly? Probably the most famous test of altitude is the climb of Mount Everest. At the height of around 29,000 feet, climbers around the world work as hard as they can to ensure they can survive the trip. One of the reasons it is so challenging is because the oxygen levels are at 6.9%. An article from Washington Post named What's It Like to Climb Mount Everest Without Oxygen notes that acute mountain sickness starts out feeling like a hangover with headache and nausea, and it can progress to poor motor control, confusion, swelling in the brain, fluid in the lungs, coma, and death. The thing is, harmful side effects can start at a minimum 18,000 feet and get progressively worse the higher you go up. When we take a look back at up, it is clear to see that the house goes above the clouds as if it was shot from a plain window. I point to this scene specifically because Carl actually opens a window and seems completely healthy. While it is unknown if they even pass the 20,000 foot mark, being on a floating house above the clouds for that long will certainly make it hard to live. I will get into the duration of the flight later in the video. The next problem I encountered was the temperature factor. Another known fact is that the higher you go, the colder it gets. If we take the details I said earlier about how high the house goes, we can assume that the house was exposed to very low temperatures for a long time. One of the most common effects of being exposed to low temperatures is frostbite. An emergency room physician noted that frostbite can occur in as little as 10 minutes when skin is exposed to temperatures that are negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. While negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit may seem to be unrealistic and up, if we take a look at the heights to standard pressure and temperature table, it is noted that at 20,000 feet, the temperature should be around negative 12.3 Fahrenheit. Let's also take a look back at this scene again where Carl opens a window. Not one reaction to the cold, nor the oxygen. Unless Carl built a heated and oxygen provided house, chances are they wouldn't be able to see Paradise Falls in the way they wanted. Now, I know what you're thinking. What if the house didn't go that high in the first place and it wasn't that cold? Well, the answer is time. Paradise Falls is based off a real life structure in Venezuela. Since we can assume the movie started somewhere in the United States, we can draw some conclusions. A plane from Dallas, Texas to Caracas, Venezuela is 5 hours and 23 minutes. The thing is, this plane is being lifted by extremely powerful jets, not to mention that it is climate controlled and provides sufficient oxygen to its passengers. Now let's take one last look at our new and improved flying house. All it has for transportation are balloons and wings created from shower curtains. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's going to take longer than 5 hours to get to Paradise Falls. Even though no one has actually tested this journey, I can tell you right now that the first will not be me. What I'm really trying to say is that with the negative effects of being in high altitudes without the help of warmth or oxygen, Carl and Russell would eventually suffer and end up in a state much worse than it is portrayed in the movie. Even though I wouldn't tell this information to my younger self, it is good to know it so I or whoever is watching this doesn't start putting balloons in the chimney to one day sail off into the sky. Hopefully this video helped you understand a bit of the nature of altitude and can maybe lead you to wonder about other unrealistic movies. Don't get me wrong, I don't want you complaining to movie companies about their unrealistic situations. After all, that is what they are for. My name is Jose Fernandez, thank you for watching. Hello!